Chemistry lecture number one, units of measurement. Now, chemistry is a study of the properties of matter, and some of the properties of matter are length, volume, mass. And we use metric prefixes to quantize each of these three different uh, quantities. Now, in chemistry, to start with length, we measure length in meters. And one meter is about three feet. So if you take three rulers and put them end to end, you'll get uh, a meter. And uh, meters are good for measuring uh, moderate distances, like the length of a room. Uh, a football field is about 91.44 uh, meters long. Um, but what if you want to measure shorter lengths, like the uh, length of a pencil? Uh, for shorter lengths, we use the centimeter. And the way we come up with the centimeter is that you take a meter stick and slice it into 100 pieces, and one of those little pieces, or one one-hundredth of a piece, would be a centimeter. So here is something that is one centimeter in length. This is a cube that's one by one by one, but that'll give you an idea of how much one centimeter is from here to here. Centi means one one-hundredth, or 10 to the negative 2, so 1 centimeter is 1 one-hundredth of a meter, or 1 times 10 to the negative 2 meters. 2 centimeters is 2 times 10 to the negative 2 meters, and so on. 3 centimeters. To convert it to meters, you just slap on times 10 to the negative 2. 3 centimeters is 3 times 10 to the negative 2 meters. Um, let's see. A nickel is about uh, 2 centimeters in diameter, so from here to here, that's about two centimeters, okay? So a nickel is two centimeters in diameter. Now, if we take a meter stick and slice it into 10 pieces instead of 100 pieces, we get something called a decimeter. So a decimeter is one-tenth of a meter. Deci means one-tenth or 10 to the negative one. So one decimeter is one times 10 to the negative one meters. Two decimeters is two times 10 to the negative one meters and so on. So a decimeter is about uh, the height of a coffee uh, mug. So here's a coffee mug. So from here to here, that's about one decimeter. Now we can use length measurements to determine the volume of an object. And volume is the amount of space occupied uh, by an object. So we use length units to establish volume units. So here's how we establish uh, length units. Suppose we take a cube that's one centimeter by one centimeter by one centimeter. Now the volume of a cube is length times width times height. So for this cube, the volume is going to be one centimeter by one centimeter by one centimeter. One times one times one is one. Centimeters times centimeters times centimeters is centimeters cubed. So a cubic centimeter, it measures one by one by one. And you've seen this one before, but this is a cubic centimeter. All right, it's just a tiny little box. That's how much one cubic centimeter is. Sometimes instead of writing cubic centimeters, we write uh, cc's. So cc's means cubic centimeters. Also, a cubic centimeter is the same as a milliliter. Okay, and you just have to know that uh, cubic centimeters and uh, cc's and ml's all mean the same thing. Incidentally, in medical shows, uh, if you see the doctor yell, give him 10 cc's of adrenaline. Well, that's what the cc's mean, cubic centimeters. 10 cc's of adrenaline have a volume of about that much. All right, so syringes are measured in cubic centimeters. Uh, and so here's a graduated cylinder that I filled up with 10 cubic centimeters of uh, some water. So that's how much one cubic centimeter of uh, water with some food dye added to it looks like. Okay, uh, a soda can. That's about 355 cubic centimeters, so a soda can. It's about 355 milliliters or cubic centimeters. All right. Now, if we want to measure even larger volumes, we use the liter. So, <clears throat> 
The way they come up with a liter is they took a box and instead of the box being a tiny little box like this, they used a bigger box like this. And the dimensions of this bigger box were <coughs> 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters. And so the volume is 10 centimeters times 10 centimeters times 10 centimeters. So 10 times 10 times 10 is 1,000. And then centimeters times centimeters times centimeters is centimeters cubed. So that's 1,000 cubic centimeters. Incidentally, 10 centimeters is the same as one decimeter. Remember a decimeter is about the height of a coffee mug? So this little cube here measures 10 by 10 by 10, but it's also cubic centimeters, but it's also one decimeter by one decimeter by one decimeter. So it's one decimeter by one decimeter by one decimeter. So the other way we could say it is one decimeter by one decimeter by one decimeter. And that gives us one decimeter cubed. And then instead of calling it a decimeter cubed, we just call it one liter or one L. Okay. Um, so what you should memorize is that a thousand cubic centimeters is the same as a thousand milliliters, which is the same as one liter, which is also the same as one cubic decimeter. Most of the time we use liters. Some chemistry books I've come across use cubic decimeters, so you have to be aware of what that means. Incidentally, if you were to drink three cans of soda, you would be drinking about a liter of uh, soda which is probably not very good for your health. This is not an endorsement of any particular product. Don't drink sugar. Anyway. Now if, uh, if a thousand milliliters, milliliters equals one liter, it makes sense that uh, a milliliter, one milliliter is one one thousandth of a liter. The prefix milli means one one thousandth or 10 to the negative third. So one milliliter is one one thousandth of a liter or one times 10 to the negative three. Then again, uh, two milliliters is two times 10 to the negative three and so on. So that's how you convert milliliters into liters. You just slap on times 10 to the negative third. All right, so we've talked about uh, volume measurements. Let's talk a little bit now about uh, mass measurements. Now, mass is the amount of material you have, which is a rather vague definition I got out of a uh, chemistry book. Well, intuitively, if something feels heavy, we can say it has a lot of mass. And a lot of times we use uh, the weight of an object to describe its mass. But mass and weight are not the same thing. Uh, we can derive the mass from the weight, um, but they're not the same thing. <clears throat> weight is the gravitational pull uh, on an object, and mass is uh, how hard it is to get something to move if you try to push it. That's about the best I could do for right now. If you really want to know the... Um, formal definitions of mass and weight, you'll have to take uh, physics. So sorry about that. For right now, we'll just say that uh, weight and mass are kind of similar, but they really aren't the uh, same thing. But intuitively, people seem to understand it in terms of weight. Okay, well, how do we uh, figure out what mass is? The way they figured out a unit of mass is they took this little box again that's one by one by one, one centimeter by one centimeter by one centimeter. So it's one cubic centimeter. And then they took this little box and they filled it with water. And the mass of water in this one cubic centimeter box is defined as one gram. So that's how we came up with the idea of what a gram is. It's the amount of water that you can fit into this tiny little box. Let's see. Now to measure small amounts of mass, oh, wait a minute, let me back up just a little bit, sorry. A penny is about uh, 
I think it's about 2.5 grams. Let me double check my notes. Yeah. So that'll give you an idea of how heavy a, a gram is. Two and a half grams is the equivalent of a penny. Okay. Anyway, let's move on. Um, let's say we want to measure something that's even lighter than a penny, like uh, rice. So it's not practical to measure, uh, well, I guess you could measure it in grams, but sometimes you want to measure really tiny quantities of uh, mass. Well, to measure tiny quantities of mass, we use something called the milligram. Milli means one one thousandth, so one milligram is one one thousandth of a gram, or one times ten to the negative three grams. Two milligrams is two thousandths of a gram, or two times ten to the negative three, and then two like that which is the same as 0 0.0, let's see, 1, 0 0.0, 1, 2, 3, yeah, there we go. <laughs> so that's the meaning of milligram. And how much is a milligram? Well, one grain of rice is about one milligram. So if you have 10 grains of rice, you have 10 milligrams. And uh, other things are measured in milligrams. Pills are often measured in milligrams. Aspirin tablets uh, are supposed to have like 395 milligrams of uh, aspirin in them. To measure larger amounts of mass, we use something called the uh, kilogram. And kilograms uh, means, or the prefix kilo means 1,000 or 10 to the third. So one kilogram is one times 10 to the third grams. 2 kilograms is 2 times 10 to the third grams, or 2,000 grams. Okay, so how much is a kilogram? Well, if you take ugh, three cans of soda again, you try to lift it and you see, oh gee, how, much, how, how, how heavy does that feel? Well, you're holding on to uh, about a kilogram. Actually, it's a little bit more. It's about 1.1 uh, kilograms. So, three cans of soda are about uh, the equivalent mass of uh, one kilogram. Actually, it's a little bit more than that. Okay, so let's sort of summarize a little bit of what we've done. Length is measured in meters, centimeters, and decimeters. Volume is measured in cubic centimeters, and cubic centimeters and milliliters are the same thing. I can put an equal sign between these guys. And it's also measured in liters. Mass is measured in grams, milligrams, and kilograms. Now, we've been mentioning metric prefixes a bit, and you should really get these memorized and what they mean. So, here's a table showing some of the prefixes we use today, and there are lots of other prefixes that you'll probably come across, but these are the ones that are very commonly used. So, milli means one one thousandth, or ten to the negative third, to convert milliliters to liters, you would just slap on times 10 to the negative third and it becomes liters. Centi, the prefix means one one hundredth or 10 to the negative two. If you want to convert 85 centimeters to meters, well, you just slap on times 10 to the negative two. That's what centi means, 10 to the negative two or one one hundredth. Deci means one tenth. So to convert four decimeters to four meters, Slap on times 10 to the negative 10. So that, you know, that's what this little D here means to the negative 1. And the C means times 10 to the negative 2. Kilo means 1,000. So 6.3 kilograms means 6.3 thousand grams or 6.3 thousand times 10 to the third grams. All right, well, we covered a fair amount of stuff in this lecture. So if you want to repeat the lecture and... Uh, rewrite the key points, that's fine. The other thing you can do if I was going too fast for you is uh, just go to www.richardlouis.com. There's a PDF file of this lecture. So it's all written out and you can download it. Maybe you can watch the lecture again and read along as you uh, listen and watch the uh, lecture. Anyway, thank you very much for watching.